Hello, Aldo here. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, setting up my render settings uh, for Maya. But before I set up my render settings, I want to go ahead and also show you how to create an example of a scene that's going to look like this. Uh, this, this is the quality that I want to render out at. So I want to show you how to how I created these lights. I have two lights here. I have a spotlight and a directional light. I'm going to show you how to set those up, then show you how to set up the render scenes, uh, the render settings. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, go into the render settings and I'm going to actually lower the resolution for this one so that uh, the preset just so that it renders out a little bit faster. Um, but when you set up your uh, render settings, in a moment, I'll show you what settings I want you to use. Um, but I'm, I'm just changing this right now, the resolution. And since I'm here, uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and set up my quality. Um, usually it's set to preview quality. I'm gonna go and change it to production quality. And, if you scroll down under ray trace quality, go ahead and turn on ray tracing. So that's going to give us uh, going to give us the ability to be able to use high quality settings. And right here, let me go ahead and close this window. Let me go ahead and switch to my camera one. Let's move to like this frame. Like we'll look, we'll look at this frame right here. I'm going to go ahead and render this frame out. Depending on your settings, resolution, how powerful your computer is, etc. All of these are taken into consideration in regards to rendering. This took about four seconds at this small resolution. If I was to increase it to a higher resolution, it'll take longer if I add more uh, change the settings and such, it could take longer as well. But we got something like this. So let me go ahead and show you how I set this up. So I'm going to switch to my perspective view here. And over here, I have my outliner displayed. This is under window outliner. So I have that turned on. I'm going to select this spotlight. I'm going to hide it by selecting it and pressing Control H. The, that keyboard shortcut is the same for Mac or PC. I'm going to do the same with the directional light, Control H. So what I have right here, because I had seven pressed, I'm going to press five. This shows me the, uh, the uh, shader mode. Seven is lights, but since I turned off the lights, it's black. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna go to create. I'm gonna go to lights. I'm gonna go ahead and first start off by creating a spotlight uh, option box. I just left this as uh, default. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to, if you want you, I'm going to go ahead and reset the settings and tell it to create. And what I have right here, I have my light. I'm going to press T for the show manipulator tool. It gives me the ability to change the placement, the two controls. And since I have seven press, this is using the lights. I'm going to go back to my top view, or my four panels view. I want to go ahead and start to position these. Uh, I want to move my light kind of kind of overhead in front. But then what I want to do, I want to change where it's pointing. And let's see, I need to push this light higher. So because it, I go up, it goes up higher, you can see how the cone is getting larger. But this line right here, that's a penumbra. Penum, I can't say it. <laughs> penumbra. And right now it has a value of zero. And if we look at this, I'm gonna go, I'm looking at it within my camera one. If I go ahead and render this, I said render. <laughs> I uh, press play. I'm gonna go and render it by clicking on this button right here in the top of my interface. The render the current frame. It's missing a couple things. You can see how the penumbra, it's really harsh. And also the shadows, it's also, they are really harsh as well. Um, they're really, like it's hard light. I wanna make it a little bit softer. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna close this window. 
I'm going to, my spotlight is still selected. Let's go into the attribute editor. And within the attribute editor, the first thing that I want to do is the penumbra angle. As I increase this, you can kind of see what's doing, um, what's going on within the preview. Let me go and switch to my perspective, you can see. Oh, another thing I should mention is that within my scene, very important, I have a floor plane. And I strategically am using a spotlight and this floor plane so that uh, nothing in the background around it is going to have light. So you won't see these edges. So that's a thing of consideration. Uh, but what I have right here, you can see the penumbra angle, how it's starting, if the value gets larger, then zero, it starts to spread out or fades out by going outside that angle. If it goes smaller than zero, it's gonna kind of spread, spread out or, or fade out going inside. So I'm just gonna go make sure that this is a little bit larger. And if you want, you could also, the cone angle is the actual size. So you could do a spotlight that closes. And this could be something that could be fun to animate over time as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and change this back to 40. And let's see what this looks like so far. If I render out this current frame, you can see the edge, it's looking good. Um, it's going to increase as we change some of these settings. I can leave this window open for right now. And I'm gonna scroll down and I want to make sure that I'm not using uh, depth map shadows. I want to make sure that ray trace is turned on. What I want to do now is I want to increase the light radius. Right now, the, the light radius is set to zero. So it's kind of like having concentrated light from one point. I'm going to increase this radius. It kind of is increasing the size of where the light is. Now the light radius is is set to one. So it's different from like using like a, something that's really small, uh, a small light concentrated to a, a larger light. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and render this current frame. You can see in the render view over here in the top left corner, I have this little slate. Okay, great. Uh, but now if you look at these shadows right here, they get really uh, dithered, really grainy. So what I want to do now is I want to increase the shadow rays. Right now it's just a set to one. So it only has one. Uh, consider this kind of like the resolution. I'm gonna go ahead and just bump this up, not to 40. Uh, that we could do that, but it's gonna take a lot more time. I'm gonna go ahead and select, se select 10. Let's go ahead and update this. And you can see that now, uh, this is uh, this is good for right now. You can see that this is now, we get this nice, uh, it's a little bit smoother, it's not as grainy. And just to show you what the ray, the ray depth limit is, this is kind of like how many times the, your ray is gonna bounce around. So if we have this set to zero, and I render this out, notice that we get no shadows. Now, if I set this down to one and render it, now you get a shadow, but once it hits there and the shadow, it stops. As I increase it to three, which was the value that we had, the light continues to bounce and you start to see, it's the, this angle is not the best, but you could start to see some of the reflections on these different surfaces. Now I'm gonna scroll back up now to the shadow color. And right now it's really dark. I'm actually going to, no, I'm not gonna to go to white, but I don't want black. I'm gonna go select a gray color so that it lightens, it lightens it a bit. So now we have something like this. Let me go ahead and change the angle. We'll go right here and render out this frame just so we could see the difference. 
So now you can see right here, this I think is a, and we could see some of the shadows right here. Let's go back and let's change that uh, ray depth limit to one and see if, if they're still there. You can see right here, because it's only one, once it hits the object, it's only able to bounce one more time, which casts a shadow and that's it. It doesn't bounce off the, the floor. Let's bring it back to two and see what happens. So we can see it's they're there. If we have if you have more values or the ray depth, if you increase it even more, it continues to bounce around. I'm going to leave it at three, and this gives us some really good settings. So this looks good, uh, but what I want to do, if you notice, because the the background is black, it's really dark. Uh, we kind of lose some of the edges right here. So what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and create another light. Uh, this is going to be a directional light. And what we're going to do, we're going to have a light that is going to be uh, uh, focusing on lighting up the back edge of our objects. Uh, it's going to create like a, what's called like a, a rim light that is just going to create some light on the back. Uh, but the thing is, once we introduce another light, it's going to light the entire scene. I'm going to show you how we're going to be able to only have this light just uh, light, not the floor, but just our uh, text, our logo. So I'm going to go ahead and go to create. I'm going to go to lights and we're going to create a directional light. Let's go to option box. We're, we're going to leave these settings to these, these default. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create. And our light, it's, I'm going to use the move tool for right now. We don't need the uh, show manipulator tool. And what I'm going to do is, remember, right now we have uh, the light mode turned on. I'm going to go ahead and move this light up. The actual placement of your light doesn't matter, but what I, I like to do, I like to place my light in the direction of where the light is coming from. So I'm going to go ahead and raise it. I'm going to, and if you notice how it's pointing forward, I don't want it point forward in front. I'm going to move it over here. I actually want to kind of put, position it over here. Now I'm going to switch to my rotate tool. I'm going to point this light kind of is pointing towards, and I also want to point it slightly downward. And you can see what's happening right now. It's now pointing towards the back side of my text, but it's also lighting up the floor. If I was to render this out, what's going to happen is that now I can actually see the entire floor plane, which is not my intended thing. Uh, what I want to do, I want to make sure that it's really bright over here. Uh, and it's also casting another shadow. Those are things that I don't want. So I'm going to show you how we could fix this. Let's go back to our perspective view. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to maybe point this down a little bit and not so much pointing downwards. It's more pointing just towards that direction. Now this isn't to limit how much shadow it's is being placed. Uh, I, I want it to really hit the backside. And also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna increase this intensity. Right now it's set to one. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to two, intensity of two. But now what I also wanna do, I wanna tell this light to only light the letters, not the floor and not to cast a shadow. Let's get rid of the shadow first. With my directional light selected, I'm going to go into shadows here. And we're not using depth maps. Right here, I'm in the attribute editor. And right now, it's using ray tracing. I'm just going to turn this off. So this light, it's going to light the back of this text, but it's not going to cast a shadow. And why are you able to do that? And the next thing I want to do, still with my light selected, we're going to open up a window. 
So we're going to go to Windows. We're going to go into Relationship Editors. We're going to use what is called Light Linking, and we're going to tell it Light Centric. With this option here, we are able to tell Maya what lights uh, are associated or uh, what lights are affecting what objects within our scene. So remember, these other lights were in my demo lights. Uh, so I have this directional light too. And notice how everything is selected. I just want to unselect the floor because I don't want the floor to be affected by this directional light. And that's it. So we just connected or disconnected uh, the directional light to light the floor. I'm going to close this window now. And if we switch to our view right here, and let's go ahead and render it out. I said render. <laughs> I, I push, I press play and render out the scene. There we go. You see this nice little highlight. That's what I wanted. And you notice that the floor plane is not lit and it's not casting that additional shadow. So let's go ahead and check out. Let's go ahead and move a frame. Sure, we'll go right here. Let's render this out. Let's see what this looks like. Great, I have this nice highlight. It's adding the separation from the background. This looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and save this right now, Command or Control S. So now that we have this set up, I have our frames. Now I know for my example, it's only 120 frames, but for my students, you're supposed to create your logo that should be at least 168 frames. Uh, but again, this is just a demo uh, on my part. So now that I have this, I need to set up my render settings. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Already saved. So to set my render settings, very important. The first thing that I want to make sure is that make sure that you've set your project directory. So if you already have your project window, if you set it before, you could always tell it to set your project which is telling Maya to use a specific folder. I previously created this Art326 logo folder. I'm gonna go and select it and tell it to set. And assuming that you properly set up your project directory, let's go to file, uh, that folder should have all of these files in there. I'm sorry, all of these folders in there. I don't wanna set it, I, don't, I do not wanna create a new project right now because I already have one. Uh, but at this point, you either make sure that you have a project directory set up or you select the right one. The reason I say this is because Maya is now going to create a bunch of folders, a bunch of images, um, and we need to tell Maya where to place them. I'm going to cancel this window for right now. So now we want to go into our render settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little button right here that takes us to the render settings. Uh, first, I want to start off in the common tab. Let's go all the way to the top. And I want to point out under common path, this is the location where Maya is going to put our images. It's, it's your project directory and the images folder. So what I want to do first, I want to give this file a name. Right now, there's nothing set. I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, art326 logo, image format. I want you to select something that is a high quality. I'm going to select TIFF. Now you could select TIFF. I do not suggest that you select a JPEG simply because th this is uh, a really compressed image format. Uh, you could use uh, PNG, but I'm going to use TIFF. This is a high quality lossless file format. So that's a, I want you to change that. Under frame and animation, I want you to select name.number or uh, hashtag <laughs> dot extension. Very important that you select this one. Don't select this one because uh, you want the extension to be last. If you use this one, you're gonna have to rename all your images. So don't want, don't use this one. So name.number sign dot extension. So for frame padding, if you look up here where it says uh, file name, 
Uh, frame padding is how many digits? I'm going to go ahead and just drop this down to three because I only am going to go up to uh, frame 120. I'm going to scroll down. The frame range, I want to start at frame one and I want to end not at frame 10, but at frame. My example only goes up to 120. Your projects should go at least to 168. I want to frame uh, by one. My camera right here, very important. Oftentimes students fail to select the correct camera. I want to make sure that I'm rendering out from camera one. Very important. Image size, your presets. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you select at least HD 720. Uh, you can go HD 1080. It will take longer. For my example, so that I could render out faster, I am selecting HD 540. So this is going to give me my resolution size. And we could always go now under render using. Uh, I am using Maya software. So I could always go back here. We already set this up, but I can make sure. I want to use production quality. I'm going to leave these settings as default. Make sure that ray tracing is turned on. Great. I'm going to close this. I'm going to save my file, Command S. And this is where you make sure that all your lights are set up properly. So once we have this, we now could tell Maya to render out our scene. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you where to render out. Uh, then I'll stop the video. Then in my next video, I, hopefully my animation will be done. And the only reason I don't want to do this right now is because I'm recording this video and the rendering process takes lots of, uh, uh, this is where it really makes use of your CPU, how many um, processors, threads you have. So I'm going to go to the rendering menu to render out your scene. You go now in the rendering menu, you go to renderer. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to under batch render, batch render option box. Within this window here, my suggestion for you is you could tell it to use all available processors. So that takes, it's going to use all your processing. Uh, you can tell it to only use so many processors. Like say, for example, uh, if you have a multi-core processor, only use a fraction of them. But I'm going to suggest you use all of them. At this point, uh, you could press batch render and close. Uh, what I'm going to do, you know, let me just tell it to use half of mine. I have 16, only use eight because I still need some. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to batch render and close. Let's see, I'm going to tell it to continue. Let's see, I have some windows that are popping up. What I suggest that now you click down here on the bottom right-hand corner, click on this button. This is going to bring up what's called the script editor. The script editor is showing you the process of your render. Now I'm trying to extend this. There we go. You can see that it's rendering image 9, 10 at the percentage, and it's going to keep on going. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this video. And in the next video, I should have all of my images uh, rendered out. So I'll see you in the next video. In the next video, I'll also show you how to put all these images together to create your movie file. I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Bye.